Hi, welcome to this Open Security Summit training session on the ICAP, uh, which is called the uh, Internet Content Adaptation Protocol. Cool. So this is a, a project that we're doing internally at Glasswell that I thought would be a good idea for us to do a threat model and to understand kind of the threats and the thinking and, and, and the areas to look at. And we're still implementing this. It's a good time to do it because you know we can still affect the design and uh, everything that goes with it. So everything at the summit, you know, you, you'll see it's open, you know, what to expect, expect you to participate, you know, it's a challenge and to be involved. Uh, like I said, everything is open here. You know, we, we, we publish these videos on YouTube and, um, and everything we create is released on open source and, and Creative Commons. Um, you know, we're very strong with the whole, um, you know, collaboration. We ask everybody to respect each other and uh, to have a good level of professionalism. And then, you know, this is the hashtag, this is the, um, how you collaborate. And if you're not on our Slack, you know, please be in our Slack. There's a lot of stuff going on there. So Paul, over to you. So Paul is gonna start with giving us an overview of the project that we are integrating. Um, to put this into context, so, you know, at Glasswall, we, we have a technology that allows us to create um, clean files. So what we do are save files. So what we do is we, we, we take a file and uh, we rebuild it in a safe way. So imagine creating an uh, object model of a file and then rewriting it uh, according to the spec. And that's why we'll see a bunch of sessions also on the summit about the ISGs, which is the isolation and sanitization protocols, which is one of the things we try to enforce. And the idea is to create files that are safe at the other end. And one of the things that we're doing now is we are integrating with a bunch of platforms and what you see here with this ICAP implementation is our efforts of integrating with uh, proxy providers which are hardware or software based um, very experienced players that uh, you know handle the files and they're able to give us the file um, to the ICAP protocol which is what Paul is going to go into. Over to you Paul. Thank you. Uh, so The original um, uh, setup that we had for a proof of concept was uh, was very much sitting um, based on what the structure of uh, the architecture detailed in the RFC uh, for ICAP um, was. Uh, so using their terminology, we have a client, and we have an origin server, we have a proxy, uh, the example that uh, uh, we're using was uh, Squid. Um, the traffic goes through the ICAP server, um, and the uh, the Glasswell element is a an ICAP resource within that server. Um, our, the idea being that um, we uh, intercept the traffic and process the documents where we can. Um, so this was the, pr the proof of concept. The idea of making that ICAP resource as, as thin as possible, really, so that we can then move moving forward. Uh, we can make use of cloud resources or we have the flexibility to use on-prem resources or, or whatever. Um, so we're currently working with a company called F5 um, and we're plugging into their, uh, one of their um, tools for, uh, for a large project. Uh, or sorry, one of their applications for a large project. Um, and so this is pretty much summarizing the, the, the architecture. Their product uh, runs as a, an ICAP client. Um, it sits uh, and uh, handles all the uh, internet traffic going in and out of a, uh, of a company. The, uh, the, the traffic is routed through to the ICAP um, server that uh, we're sitting in. And the implementation that we've decided to go with is to use a proxy application um, that is called for each, each document um, to be processed. Um, so the the advantages of this is that um, we can uh, switch uh, in different uh, proxy ap applications to handle different scenarios. So the, um, the the basic one that we're working on at the moment is that uh, the, uh, the, ha the, the files are intercepted and they handled um, and managed um, directly and then processed back. Um, moving forward, we can use um, uh, cloud-based or um, dockerized um, solutions for for that. The um, the way that the ICAT works is that um, a request comes in. Um, we can handle the. It, it works with either um, requests or responses. Um, 
so the traffic going to an origin server or from an origin server um, the the um, each request is passed through the ICAT um, server there's logic within F5 to decide what uh, what information uh, which requests are routed um, so uh, the um, the amount of traffic that we have is a can be controlled by um, by F5 uh, so but when the traffic comes through the we do some basic um, magic number checking on the on the document to make sure that it's um, something that we can handle to try and reduce reduce the load on the uh, the, the Glasswell SDK uh, and then the um, for each request that comes through a new proxy app is fired up the um, the, the document process is passed in we do the we use the uh, rebuild SDK's file detection um, API to work out which file type it is and to make sure that Glasswell can process it and if that is satisfied then we um, uh, pass it through the rebuild SDK um, and then what the rebuild resource does is receives back the, the, the modified file um, and replaces the um, original request or response body with the, um, the rebuilt um, file. The, we, the way we're interfacing into the proxy app is we're passing in, um, we're using uh, files. Uh, so you, you, there's temporary files created by the rebuild resource with the um, incoming data. Uh, we're passing the, the original um, uh, request body as the uh, at the input file location. We specify an output file location, which is where an assembly file has been created, and then the um, we can pass in some configuration um, so that uh, moving forward at the moment this we don't we're not using any, but moving forward when we um, pass the uh, the the data into the cloud or whatever, we can capture information from the request to give us some context as to um, what. Um, uh, where the messages come from, the time, date, time, and <coughs> excuse me, um, other information that's in the in the header. Um, yeah, so the that's that the configuration fee is, is optional because we we don't need that configuration to actually process the uh, the file. Um, let's say the, the the solution here is is flexible. Um, so the uh, with the, the the address of the uh, the proxy application being um, defined, or the, the location of the proxy application being defined within the um, rebuild resource configuration, we can change it um, uh, once after deployment. Um, and so you, you can have run with the basic application, or we can have an, uh, a Docker application or cloud application. We just need to change the location. Um, but as long as we, uh, as long as the uh, replacement applications comply with the the interfaces then we should be good to um, to uh, proceed um, there is some um, load balancing built into the ICAP server that we're using so we're using um, um, an open source uh, project um, C ICAP it's um, developed in C um, the uh, and that gives us a fair amount of um, load balancing uh, which the, so as, as traffic um, increases we start off with um, three threads or three processes that can handle um, traffic and as you can see from the configure this is just a, a snippet of the configuration that's uh, available so we can control the rate at which um, additional processes are spun up and um, and subsequently killed killed off um, but this means that um, we got some control over the uh, the, the um, the load balancing that's carried out but it just also means that as as the traffic increases through f5 um, then uh, we, we have the capability of scaling up uh, to to cope with the the traffic the one of the limitations we have with the uh, the SDK is that we can only process one file at a time through it um, and the the use of the proxy app uh, uh, works around that problem to allow us to allow parallel processing of uh, documents um, to improve the, the throughput and the, uh, the amount of traffic that can be handled. Um, so that's pretty much a summary of uh, what the, um, the product's doing uh, and how it's doing it. Any questions, Roy or Ronnie? Yeah, very cool. So, um, so have, have we have you mapped like the the assets that we you know we have here? No, I haven't. 
So the yeah. so the the, the the distribution of the um, the uh, or the deployment of the kit, uh, the the F5 um, is deployed on on one host, and the uh, ICAP server is deployed on uh, or can be co uh, co-located. But it's um, one of the uh, the motivators for the ICAP um, protocol was to um, spread the load and effects. Um, so to allow additional processing without uh, to be um, distributed. Um, so it makes more sense to comply with the, what the intention of the RFC was to um, put the ICAP resource onto uh, the separate host. Um, and so that's that's the um, deployment that uh, is currently being uh, worked with. Yeah, so cool. the so the the rebuild resource itself is is a library that fits into the the C ICAP um, ICAP uh, server. Um, so they it provides effectively a, a, a plugin framework, um, and so we're developing the the plugin that fits into that. So we the uh, the rebuild resource is is co-located with the ICAP server because it's just a, it's a, a shared library that has to be um, on the same machine for the uh, for the server to pick it up. And like likewise with the with the proxy app, um, at the moment it's running as a uh, as um, well, it's running as a, an application, um, and the configuration is a is a is a, a, a file location um, in the ICAP resource configuration. So it it's it's co-located um, with the ICAP server. Yeah, and and so so those those are like the, the, the server assets, right? That we have, right? From a, from an infrastructure point of view. Yes. Those are the. Yeah, so I think that that would be cool to start to, to draw that right on the on the other on the, um, so 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 maybe what we can do is well, let, let's look first from the threat modeling point of view at the sort of the network layer right almost like the infrastructure layer which is kind of what you've got here right yeah um, from a point of view of um, of the, the the core components and um, and and I think it's interesting then to do the, the three variations. Where we got the in in process, um, and then Docker, and then the 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 the, the cloud the rebuild sort of the, the cloud version, right? Yeah, yeah. Cool. So we, we got we got um, uh, what's it called a mural uh, thing. With the link should be shared on the session, but we can paste it again. Um, where we yeah, let me paste that again. So. Um, so that's, you guys can pop in to, yeah, the chat. I'll just put it here. Yeah, I think that's it. Yep. So if you should be able to accept that, and I think you can share your screen there, Paul. I think I can see it too here, right? Yeah. Yep. Do we share that? Yeah, if you could. And, um, Cool. Yeah, and I think I think what will be good now is if we start to, um, you know, basically I think we can actually put a, an area here. Cool. Yeah. So we can look at this in um, in kind of, and this is actually quite cool because everybody should be able to edit this, so you guys can you can start to do this more collaboratively, right? So we we can use this one to to map the network layer. Right of the application, right? So, so this is this is literally um, uh, the um, you know looking at the the core components from from the application, right? So, if you think about it, each box here should kind of it's kind of what you you have above, right? But then, what I want to do is I want to map the you know the the kind of the, the assets and 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 we go through the strides uh, just on the network layer. So we, you okay. know, we, we forget about the application, right? It's just about who can talk to who, right? And and how is that yeah. then being authenticated and how, how those, you know, almost the trust boundaries when we, we map them, how they actually operate. Okay. So if you start adding, and I'm just gonna put a screenshot in there. So can you start adding the boxes? Uh, yeah. Um,
And okay, so how do I insert an image here? I image. Good. Okay, so the connection uh, between the, F, the F5 client and the um, ICAP servers, so it's a, it's uh, it's CC, TCP IP. Um, yep. and the protocol, the protocol itself is um, similar to HTTP, but not the same as HTTP. Um, so, in fact, that is that HTTP or HTTPS? It's neither. It's I, ICAP. Um, okay. Oh yeah, there you go. So, ICAP. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's why it's called an ICAP server. Sure enough. Um, All right. So the uh, so when the F the F five client um, references the uh, is communicating with the server, it does a um, it does a uh, uh, effectively an ICAP uh, a call to ICAP, and so the UR, the URI being referenced starts, whereas a uh, uh, an internet um, URL will start with HTTP or HTTPS. The um, the ICAP request starts with, with um, uh, ICAP colon slash slash. Um. Okay, but yeah. So and actually, uh, so what what's interesting is what's that? Is a textbook um, from a but from a security point of view, is there is there any encryption in that protocol? No. So. So the, yeah, so, so that's interesting, right? Uh, is there a table? But, yeah. Yeah, so we need to capture that. So from a, from a security point of view, um, yeah, so the, the ICAP one, security, um, cool. Let me have that security properties. So there is no encryption, right? No encryption. No. And then what about uh, signage, right? So are you able to sign the packet? So I, if you scroll down a little bit. You see that I've added a new section just below a little bit. Just scroll down. You can, on the okay. bottom right, yeah. You see there on the bottom right, you can actually move it about. Okay. Yeah. 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 So I was basically starting that. So so there's no encryption, and is there any kind of signature, right, or validator, or like you know? Um, no, but the so, but there's this functionality we haven't um, experimented with it yet. But there's functionality within the um, the ICAP server that we're using to uh, to add um, TLS. But that's that's to the. Um, so that's on the. But well, so on, to the, to, the connection to break break TLS, right? Or to upgrade the link to TLS. What do you mean upgrade? Downgrade? Uh, or upgrade the link? Well, on the way out. Yeah. Uh, okay. So when when from the ICAP server we go out, we can go in TLS. So the ICAP server only talks to the um, to the F five client. But actually, if I can I, oops, uh, but so actually probably worthwhile moving this guy a little bit because we, what's upstream? So from um, an upstream point of view, uh, actually, wait, where do you lock this? Um, so, so from an upstream kind of point of view, the, um, 
what what's before here right so if i look at so so upstream is uh is is what you can see on um on the diagram to the on the left i kept moving forward so you have you have your the, this uh, this is pretty much showing the, the the flow of the the messaging but so you have your client which will be your, your, your browser in the simplistic sense and you have your, the the server that you're trying to retrieve um information from the um these what we've got the squid proxy server here is where F, the f5 client fits in um so the the traffic um goes goes through here and then it, it just it takes a detour um to go out to the artcap um server uh, and back again yeah that's what i was thinking right so so the reality is right you've you've got the um, you know there's if you look at the browser so where where so the the, the whole thing starts with 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 the browser right yes so so we've got so the browser is here right so the this is the this is the web browser mm -hmm. the guy is going to make a call in a way you know he calls you know he hits the the f5 right so this is the f5 server right yes so he's going to hit the f5 server um so he's going to hit well he's actually that's the icap server that's the icap server so he hits the f5 server yeah. and then the, the f5 server is the one that then you know, that that's the one that also acts as the the icap server right so it's almost this functionality uh, is in here no is that correct that, no the f5 server acts as the um as our cap client so if you, the screenshot that was at the top top right um you have the icap client that talks to the icap server so the the f5 server has a module within it which acts as an icap client okay so so this f5 client is actually the main f5 appliance yes okay so this is actually so this, you know, sorry so there's, there's there's one f5 box um okay just to yeah so in my head so that's that's the f the actual that's the actual f5 appliance yes ah okay got it so that means that in that case the um, the the you know the browser is hitting the f5 directly that's correct there, right so it goes from there to there right yes and and that bit there is in in ssl right so this bit here we assume that it can be on you know http and and https right yes cool so we got that there and uh, and that's that's the ICAP server here, right? So, but from a, from an ICAP point of view, right? If you go back, scroll down a little bit, right? The 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 actual the ICAP content will be in clear text, right? The the yeah. ICAP bits, right? Yeah. So you you might have the SSL inside of it, right? So you know SSL, let's say HTTPS traffic, right? Mm -hmm. is you know is actually is wrapped in um you know by icap right so if you if you look at what i'm writing below scroll yeah, down I'm below just, yeah i'm just bringing it up so so that's what happens right in icap message right yeah is that is that correct yes so the the uh the request that comes comes in is encapsulated within the ICAP request. Yeah, so that means that you know, we, although although the HTTPS traffic, right, is um, encapsulated, you know, it's going to be you know as a payload, right? So you're gonna so you're gonna need the um, so, so so F5 doesn't break the traffic before it gets to us. Are you sure? Um. So where where is SSL termination occurring? Surely, actually, by now this should be HTTP HTTP traffic. By the time it gets to us, yeah, there's, there's, I, I'm not aware of it. There's, we're not doing any um, decryption. The stuff that we're re receiving is um, so clear. So SSL termination, right? I think it's terminating at the F5 appliance. Yeah, happens here, right? Yeah. So, so basically, you got 
So, so you got SSL termination here, and then, and then you got, um, in a way, you have clear, uh, what's it called? You have clear text messages, right? Yes. Or unencrypted content, right? Or unencrypted clear text. content, yeah. Okay, clear text data after that, right? And that's what gets sent to us, right? Yes. Okay, so that's an important property, right? Because if you think about yeah. it, you actually start, you know, in a way, in a secure way, the data actually arrives sort of secure, right? Um, yeah. And then, um, and then when he, when, he, when he gets to us, or when he gets to the, you know, to the next player, he's going to be in an insecure state, right? Because yes. it's now not, not encrypted. Yeah. So, so that's, that's, that's cool because that's actually, is there a way to create a table on this thing? Um, uh, is uh, because that, um, t -t 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 yeah, we can actually use this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a, a table kind of to the right here where we can start to capture, you know, uh, and I'm assuming I can add more things to this, right? Oops. Um, uh, I'm going to start to capture, you know, high, you know, risks. So we're going to, we can use this to capture risks. Yeah. Um, actually, Petra, you're on the call. Thank you were initially, weren't you? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Can you, can you, can you join in and can you recreate the, the risk matrix here? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Where you have high, mediums, lows, yeah, just, yeah. just add descriptions. Because I want to, I want to start adding text to this. We can make it a little bit bigger, um, and then I want to, I want to start adding text to this oh. matrix. See the matrix there on the right. Um, you know, if you, if you look at that um, poll, if you um, see the one I just added, I just added like yeah, I just added a risk matrix, and yeah. and what what we now want to do is we want to start adding the risks that we're discovering and the vulnerabilities here, right? So in fact, we, we're gonna start with vulnerabilities because they're the facts, right? So this is basically the vuln. So I, I'll put it next to it. And then um, you, Petra, you can put it inside, right? Yeah, yeah so, I'm, I'm just about to log into the, where you are cool. in the mural. Cool, so, so the vulnerability, the yeah. So the vulnerability here is that the ICAP you know, uh, traffic, right? You know, uh, what's it called? What should we say this? Traffic, non-encrypted traffic, right? Non-encrypted yep. traffic um, inside ICAP solution, right? And uh, and I, see that, that's an interesting property because you can see that in this case, we we are downgrading the security of the platform right as soon as he hits yep. you know this and, and, and you know and this is one of those things where i know it sounds obvious right but it's kind of by design right but it's also by design because you know this particular you know hasn't been taken into account you could have done this a little bit differently but also it's an interesting property because you know you because this will add complexity right or force you to do ssl termination here right yes so one option so this is an interesting example of either you encrypt the data here and then decrypt it over there or decrypt it at the end, right? Because this is an interesting situation where, you know, the, if, if you look at the workflow, right? If you look at the actual design pattern, right? And if you go up, can you go to the design? We don't have everything. Sure. So if you scroll up a little bit yeah. and you're, if, if you go, if you look at this bit, actually, can I uh, add, uh, two sticky notes here just to show uh can you you can see my sticky note right moving there yeah yeah so so you can see that the reality is the only the only people that need to have or the only system sorry that need to have access to the data is that one and that one correct yes this crowd here in the middle doesn't actually need to have access to data. I'm trying to paste the risk matrix. Um, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not really sure how to do it. 
Um, so so say, save an image locally, take a screenshot, save it locally, or save the image locally. So it needs to be saved locally first. Yeah, 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 just save the image. Okay. Uh, actually, if you have a URL, so then you can go on the right, there is an, um, there's the thing that, you know, images, um, and I think you can, um, okay. you can okay. search for image, oh, import images, yeah. So you, you basically import the image. I just, the two images on the top there, I just pasted in. Oh, did that work? Yeah, how did you paste yeah. it? Just control V. <laughs> oh. I did a, I did a, took yeah. a screenshot and then just uh, control V'd in. Makes sense. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's there you easier. go, that worked. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, I was trying to right click and paste it, forgot about the control. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right. So actually, what, what, what you could do is, yeah, so think, think about, you know, look, look on the right, see, see, so on the left, so there's, there's a, on, on the menu and on the left, there's a couple of table options. Petra, see if you find a good one to, um, uh, on this system, on this mural, to actually um, represent that. Okay. So if, there, if you look to the left, there's kind of like a couple of options there uh, on, the, on kind of frameworks and it's called, it's the third bottom down, I think. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, yeah. I clicked frameworks, it. yeah, play with it. Um, yeah, what we want is just a nice place to put the, the findings. Um, so, so, Paul, if you go back to that where we were, right? If you look here, the, the only two entities that need access to the unencrypted file is the squid proxy and the rebuild engine. Yes. And, yeah. um, sorry, does that make sense? Yes, it does. Because the other players don't actually need to see the file, right? Although it's interesting. So, for example, you said you're already trying to look at the magic numbers, right, or something on the on the um, on the thing to to determine that, which then yes. wouldn't be possible if you did this, right? But yeah. um, but that's 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 one of those things where now you're going to have the file in an unencrypted state, right, in a number of different places. Yeah. Um, which is which is kind of one of the assets that we want to protect. Yeah. Right, and actually, what the other thing that we can do is we can already start to, you know, because we're going to need this a bit later. We can start to have also a table um, that lists the um, what's it called? Um, um, yeah, the, or I'm just looking for okay, that's icons, that's tables. Um, can we fire out the box? Can we add? Oops, no, no, that's not what I want. Um, I'm just trying to add a good place. No, this is not a good place. This won't work. Uh, I'm just trying to add a good uh, place to, to add the assets. So what we okay. need now to also do is we need to start listing the, the assets that, um, that we have. And uh, okay, cool. The text box that might work. Cool. All right. So so here, what we want, we want to list the assets that the app that we have on the application, and one of them is the the file, right? Actually, so you got two, right? Because you got uh, you got. So who who breaks the the traffic into files? Is the proxy right? Uh, so the. The, the, the file arrives uh, within the um, HTTP request in the uh, ICAP, so it's it's passed into the ICAP server within the HTTP request, and then the ICAP server then pulls out the um, the body of the uh, of the um, email, um, and then it's chunked. Uh, so it's passed to the uh, ICAT resource in chunks. The, the, the ICAT resource um, reconstructs the chunks um, and then passes the, uh, the body in its entirety um, off the processing. Yeah, so by the time he hits that class file ICAP, we, we got the files already, right? Yes. Okay. So, so if you look we, at that... We, 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 we rebuild the, the files from the chunks. Oh, so that's our responsibility to rebuild the files. 
yes all the communication uh, so the uh, it's it's mandatory that um uh, that chunking is used uh, between yep. the client and server um yeah okay got it and so 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 what you got there is you got the raw requests which then we also have the key parts is the http headers and also the files right yeah yeah and then and actually you also have the http page content right uh like what should be requests right the normal non-file request yeah. right yes um yeah. So that's right. that's where we're doing the that's why we're doing the uh, the magic number check within the um, resource, um, just so that we can um, discard what's clearly JavaScript or um, JSON or um, HTML without having to um, uh, commit the resources to um, fire mm -hmm. up the SDK to process stuff that we'll know. Manage. So you so what are you doing? You're using the um, uh, the, man, the 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 request header. Uh, no, we've, we're looking in the body to see. So the if if there is a body, then we'll check the body um, to to see what what contents in it. And if um, if it looks from the magic number as though it's not something that um, Glasswall can manage, then um, we just allow that body that allow that request to um, to go through um, unmodified. Okay. Yeah. So that's an issue. Yeah, so that's something we might want to take a look at because it's you if you have a blind spot there that could be a way to bypass the engine right yes i'm really sorry but i can't find a table that would suit this did you want like a table where you put all of this inside plus um the vulnerabilities or because all the grids are three times three i'm not sure if they're editable yeah, to be honest, like I'm actually finding there's a couple of limitations on this. We might change this. Like this, this draw IO or Lucy chart give you real time collaboration. Say again. What other? What was the other, other tool that you had that that does real time collaboration? Is it actually? Well, the, can, no, it's the tool I've been using. I haven't tried it for for real time collaboration. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't know what other tool we could use. Um, yeah, but I can't find any like table that we can create. It's just 3v3. I don't think he has any capabilities of like, I mean, yeah, we can do more, but okay. Let me see if we can do more, but it will be just a simple table. Yeah, but I think we, we probably need something a bit, I thought this was a bit, would be a bit more feature rich, this, this, this tool. It's cool, but, but I guess, you know, they, they try, I think it's a good example of they try to make it so simple that they actually are missing, you know, like those layouts, you know, how the hell you create those custom layouts. It should be, you know. Uh, we should send this video to those guys and go, look, see that from a usability point of view, there you go, right? You know, you're missing a trick. We, we're having us trying to find other tools in the middle of, of using this. Yeah. Just give me a second. You know, actually, let's just... Um, uh, Let me pause the recording, see if we can find another tool. Be back in a second. All right, cool. So, so we're back. <laughs> we just decided to change the list of charts. So we just got an account, and uh, me, Petra, and Paul are actually now doing this. So let's let's just recap. Let's just rebuild where we were, and then we can recap the the bits, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so let's just bring this. So, if Paul, you recreate that, I'll start adding. Uh, my bits from from traffic, and then we can start to look at um, at this. And uh, ta -ta -ta. shall I create a table instead of this yeah, thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Create a table, so we can start to add um, you know stuff in there. Ta -ta -ta. Yeah. All right. Cool. 
So, so I can add a little notes. Okay. So this could be HTTP traffic cool yeah Paul so what we want to do is recreate that thing on the right here so I'll add the traffic and uh, all right okay yeah sure, I mean. and can you can you add the, those boxes the appliance and the stuff so yeah. I'll, I'll do that and then um, cool so that's just the traffic ps traffic cool so that's the f5 appliance cool so that's this guy here that's cool can i bring the front Bring to front. Cool. So I just need to move you down a little bit so I can see this guy. Okay. Cool. There you go. Okay. Right, good. So that's goes HTTP, that goes HTTPS. And then what you actually have here is you got ICAP traffic, which goes like that. Very cool. So now. And then this, for example, this, this analysis, when you, you look at, for example, the, the ICAP traffic in isolation, what he means, he means that we, you know, any vulnerability with, for example, the ICAP traffic will now be associated with all of these guys, right? So, so, okay. you, can see, so you can see that, you know, when, when we look at, you know, let's say the, the ICAP traffic, um, you know, properties, then, um, oh, cool, look, you know, this, this, this actually has this some functionality, right? I can, you know, traffic. Um, what, what we now can do is we can, we can map, right, the, um, um, you know, the, the individual properties of, of this. And, um, Um, so everything then will, will inherit that, right? So you can see that. So, okay, I track, I get traffic. I want to add here phones. Yes. And when, when, when Simon talks about, you know, the whole creating you know, culture and creating, you know, systems and, and, and having practices, this is a good example, right? Because once we've nailed this structure and, um, and my frustration in the past, every time I've done this, I, it, it become very custom to a company and I really, this should be standard stuff, right? This should like be patterns that we just reuse. So you, so, so you, you are a lot more effective yeah. you know, when, you, when you do things like this, right? So, so basically you have no encryption. Not encrypted. Encrypted. 
not signs. Can I have a column here? Crawl. In Petra, if you look at this now at the top, right? Uh, I can now add Back, let me the scroll. properties. Yeah. See? Yeah. Right? I see. So yeah. let me move the risk matrix more to the top then. Yeah. See, so so now, right, is um, we, we can find that because the ICAP is not encrypted, it's not signed. You can spoof it, but you could also temper it, mm -hmm. right? And that's um, and that's kind of uh, a, a good flow. So now we start to understand, right? And then, for example, uh, no, so this, no. This graphic can go now, can't it? That yeah, yeah, get through that. Tran we've transcribed it. Um, So, so the interesting thing about this, right, is, so if you agree with that, Paul, is that it's not possible to authenticate the F5 appliance. That's or correct. Actually, I can actually probably say no authentication, right? No, actually, this is also, right? No authentication between, um, uh, you know, F5 and ICAP server, right? Yeah. And and this is where and, and this is where like when, when you when we then look at um, you know all sorts of other um, uh, you know activities it means that depending on how the network is now set up for the ICAP server that could be a problem or not. And and depending on you know like you know how how the network is configured this could be a problem or not. Yeah. Because if you could eavesdrop this traffic, it means that you now have a way, right, to um, to to see all the traffic that is flying around the environment. And then, for example, if if now you have a situation where, you know, when and I want to look at next is where are these boxes actually deployed and where who's actually running this? That can become a problem or not. Yes. Yeah. So the the. Um ICAT RFC does have sections on authentication and encryption. I'm just looking at it now. Um, yeah. But it, it, since we've, it was, we've only just out of the proof of concept, it was kind of, yeah, that, yeah. That, this, is, this is an area that we haven't looked at. Absolutely. And that's it. Look, this is exactly what happened, right? And that's why it's so powerful to do these mappings at this stage, right? Yeah, because what you understand is almost the compromises that we do, right? Or the things that still need to happen, or or like where this can be deployed in a secure way, and and then the more we provide this, the more the elements of the other side can actually understand that, right? Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. So um, yeah, and actually, um, let me just add this: that in principle. This is what happens downstream, right? So, um, where you've got the traffic then gets re encrypted, right, to the origin server. Yeah. Or not, right? So, it's an, this is a question that we can ask, right? And, and it, it probably um, needs um, need that. Um, where it's an interesting question that does, does the F5 appliance re encrypt the data, right? and then continue. It probably does because some of the servers will force HTTP these days, right? Yeah. So if they proxy, for example, Office, I'm pretty sure Office forces you to access it in an encrypted state. So in the, um, the, in the deployed system, there will be mm -hmm. two F5 appliances um, because the uh, client side will be um, encrypted. Uh, it, it comes through to um, F5, it decrypts it. Then there's um, then there's the scope for um, uh, ICAP and any other um, checking to be carried out. Before it, then it goes through another F5 appliance and it's re-encrypted before going out. Um, ah, 
So that's cool. So what you're saying is that what you do, what you actually have is this. Is that correct? So you actually have the two, um, so you have two F5 appliances um, in, there, right? Uh, yes. Actually, I can um, find you a diagram from F5 that's in the public domain. Yeah, but that's, that's the, the model, right? So they have, right? So you go from one then to the other. And, um, and, and that means that, uh, uh, so that means that actually traffic here is an, an encrypted like that? The, the, the traffic, yes, the, the, the traffic um, on, between the F5s is unencrypted. Yes, cool. Right, all right, uh, good. So, okay, so just give me a moment. And so this, Yeah, you can paste the image here. That also works. Yeah, I'm just I'm just acquiring it. And, and Petra, you you're going to recreate that matrix. Oh, you got it at the top. Yeah. Yeah, it's at the so, top. So, yeah. So what so what, what what you need now, right, is um is to actually put the fi start thinking about putting the findings in there, right? So so if you look at you know the things that we've got, right, or, or maybe actually maybe you know start mapping the risk, right? Uh, actually, either column maybe. To that uh, stride, to that column, I cap traffic, and then uh, and then yeah, and then you map the risk on it. One sec. If you, if you okay. want to, so you got. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, got it. So you got that SSL TLS. That's the thing. Unencrypted secure devices. Unencrypted to the other one. Yeah, there you go. Right. Yeah. In fact, what we can do even better, man. Like let's do this, right? Let's put that. Uh, let's put that at the top, right? So if I, if I, let me just put it here. So if I put it here and what we've got is actually um, this, right? So our users go to yeah. here and then, and then we, we kind of start. So we're in that uh, security devices, devices right? section, yeah. in the inspection. Yeah. So we, we start uh, here, right? So if I go... Let's see if this works. So this is basically, uh, uh, that's the solution here, right? Yes. Right. So that, so that's where we start, right? So we can actually get rid of that guy, rid of that guy. So we don't need this bit here, right? Because we can say we start, we start there. Yeah. Isn't it? So there's our ICAP traffic that we we're going to send in and out right and and that traffic and it is but this is this is what's interesting right so again if you look from a, a thread modeling point of view what we now say is that the traffic by this stage is already flying unencrypted in that network yeah right so so then when when you put into perspective it's like are, are we downgrading the security or not of this you see what i mean so that and that's yeah. an important property right because you know, are we actually, so, so actually, so is that ICAP server inside here or is that? No, no it's actually, there's, so there'll be two ICAP servers. There'll be yeah. one in each of the, um, the, the big IP boxes will have one each. Uh, and uh, the external one will be doing request modifications and the internal one will be doing response modifications. Okay. Got it. But that's actually, so this is actually running inside the box, right? So that yes. ICAP server actually is this whole box here. Well, whether it's in that box or whether it's, so the, the, the big IP will have the, the ICAP client where the ICAP server itself is deployed. Um, ah, okay. Got it. Got it. So, so, the, so basically the ICAP, the ICAP client is actually, is, is in the the box. Yeah, so it's yeah, it's inside the LTM. So it's there, right? You know where I put the box? Can you see that? Do you want to release it? And I'll so the yeah, I, yeah. the ICAP client is actually. 
There's, yeah. Oops, sorry, I just hit the wrong button. <laughs> uh. Yeah, they got two there, right? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, yes, and that's that's the one. Yeah, it's, to be honest, I, I have to say, I'm still, I, I was struggling in the beginning with the idea that, you know, I had the client and the server the other way around. So, so oh, okay. I, I, in my head, like the, um, the, 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 the server was this guy and, and this one was the client. <laughs> well, right? it's a, they're, all, they're all servers, but in different contexts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. One server so, then becomes a client. Yeah. So that's what we got now, right? So we got the ICAP client sends the yes. ICAP traffic to ICAP server. Yes. Right. Okay, cool. So now this is the one that then, so what happens from now on, right? So if you look at this, What's the next step here, right? Is that already the, the three jumps into, into one of the different alternatives, right? Like, yes. So, the, so, from, so, a code, so from a network point of view, the next jump is one of those three options, right? Yes. So, so if I had a... Um... Oh, actually, one option is here, right? So one option is, you know, um, GW. Yes, exactly, right? Yeah, cool. So this is now the uh, GW so this is so this will what, be something like this rebuild so, API so the, the yeah. GW so GW, GW build is the ICAP um, resource yeah and then and then GW build is then using the um, what we're calling the proxy API which can be multi is where your different flavors come in. So you can drop a different proxy API in depending on whether you want to do on-prem, containerized, or um, cloud process. So let, let's, let's, let's map the three, right? Because if you look at the process, um, so this, this, is this build actually, it, so that ICAP server basically contains, in a way, it contains that, right? Yes, because the GW build is a, um, is a, uh, a library that is loaded by the ICAP server. Yeah. So, so from that point of view, so it's a right, plugin. It's it's a plugin, right? Yeah. Um, so, okay. So the ICAP server has that, and then one yeah. option is to actually run uh, the the process directly there, right? That's so, one so when option, yeah. when you when you go like that, actually, is it correct to actually say that this could actually be uh, the GW engine, because that's one of the options you had, right? Um, which could be. So here. That uh, yes, that's one option. From a, from, a, from a technical point of view, that's what it would be, right? So this process space, and, and this is where you, you, you think about, um, uh, what's it called, um, you know, like from a, um, you know, a trust boundary point of view, right? Uh -huh. there, the, the trust boundary here is, is this box, is that box there, right? Yes. And then, and then you have another very different first boundary here and another very different there. Yeah. Right? Because actually this, if, you know, where do I can make a box on this thing? Um, is there just a box, a shape, or can I just... Yes. Um, yeah. Where, is it like the, the top one? Uh, Follow one of that. Those, uh, where is that? So it's just at the top under flowcharts section. Or there's one in shapes as well. Um, so, so above your Cisco basic, you can scroll up from there. Yep, okay. So it's just, um, yeah, UML use case. Oh, shapes, yeah, you're right, sorry. And then, um, and then I, can make, can, if I can make it transparent, right? Cool. Yeah. So what? So the other thing that we now map, right, is is the this kind of um, um, trust boundaries. So if you look here, right, this is a trust boundary, right there. Uh -huh. And because that and that, you know, if you look at that, that the trust boundary is is the server, right? So this is a server, actually. Yeah. In fact, we, we need to map this out because this is at where it is running actually. So from a network point of view, um, even before we did this, where, where is this server actually running? So this is actually a box, right? Yes. 
So, so, so where is it actually running? On the same, well, it, with the current de deployment, it's running on the same network as the, uh, as the F5 appliance. So, so actually, so you got, yeah, so, so we got here, that's the local network, right? Um, that's the local LAN, right? That yep. uh, the guys have access. And then there's this actually, so this is actually a, a, a server, right? So this is what, an EC2 machine? Or like, you know, like a, a virtual box? This is actually a physical box, right? Uh, at the moment, I've, I've only, it's, it's, it's running as a, as a VM because I've, I've only seen it running um, in a Tesla. Yeah, but this, this, this actually guy here will be, a, will be a server, right? So this yes. will be a, a server that is actually running, you know, this process, right? So this is yeah. actually a server that is running, you know, this process. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Right? And yeah, so you can see, so that is a trust boundary, right? In okay, here, yes. Right? All of that stuff is happening inside that environment, right? And then what we have is, you know, if we use the, the cloud stuff, this will go through, you know, another network, right? Yeah. To hit, you know, the, the, the JW Cloud API, right? So this could be, for example, the Azure, um, this could be our Azure Cloud environment, right? So that would be the JW Cloud, right? Yep. Uh, AWS, right? You know, rebuild, you know, environment, uh, which is a, which we could be in a completely different place, right? Yes. And then, and then this, if we do this, this will be again, most likely in there, or can we run it inside the same LAN, right? So if you do the Docker version, would you spin up a different server? Well, if you did, so the, the if you, so, actually, so you, you'd be moving on from from this architecture to having um, so you have the the uh, the proxy API spawning up as a separate process to the ICAP server. Um, so what? So so we'll be but, here. But, we'll be on the but, same same computer. But st we're still on the same box. Yes. Oh, okay. Got it. So. Um, yeah, so this is where now, and, and this is what is really cool from a, a thread modeling point of view, is that, and, and then sometimes it's worth doing this, you know, as different options, right? Mm -hmm. Because what, what we're saying is, is saying that that model that you just described is basically um, this. So if I ungroup this, so now, oops, so this guy now here, it, it now looks like, uh, so now you got the, the, the Docker there. So now you got the Docker here, right? Uh, no, so there'll be a, a proxy API that then pulls out to. So whatever the 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 G, GW engine that you've got marked up on the uh, on the first diagram yeah. affects it. So that effectively is replaced by the, um, there'll still be a, uh, a GW build, but that GW build needs to fire up a local application and then that local application will kick off uh, a Docker container or um, mm -hmm. uh, whatever we want, whatever so, flavor so, of processing so we it, need to. So if you look at the way I describe it there on, uh, on the left, is, is that yeah. kind of correct? Yes. Right. Yeah, sorry. So, so what you've got now here is so now if I go here and I go GW engine, uh, we got that. Yeah. So so actually, uh, the if we look at this, is you know we got we got that there, right? And mm -hmm. and this is the same thing. We got we got the GW engine running. I'm moving on, yeah, the, the Docker one on the right. So then you got here, well, you got that, right? You basically run as many as this as you want, right? Mm -hmm. Which is the same thing that we've got here, right? So we, we basically run as many of these guys as, as we want. Yep, 
Cool, right? So that's that's now the flow, right? So you got, so what we now have is we have, um, and maybe I can do this differently. So we got three, you know, four different modules, right? So in a way we need, so, so this is Petra's where it gets interesting, right? Because what we need to do is actually threat, four threat models or mm. variations, right? Because, because if you look at this, what you've got here, uh, and this is why eventually you want to make this into a graph, right? Because it, or else it doesn't scale very well. And, and it gets confusing, right? Because you, 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 know, you start to track, you, know, you lose track of some of these things. But if you look at this, what you have here, right, uh, is, um, is you got, this is one model here, actually there. That's a different model. Then that's a, a, another model. And that's another one. Right? And each of these will have different vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. Right? Because, and, and then in, even if you just follow the traffic, so, so one, one question here would be, where, where do you have um, an, an authenticated traffic, right? So where, where, where does the file exist, right? From, from, a, from a point of view. So if you look at the file, and then this is the file, right? So, so if you look at the file, here the file will be in there right and will be i could probably find a better icon for this right will be there but also we're now going to be sent here and you can see that the exposure right so so if you look at the file point of view the file will be and remember that the file is malicious right yeah so the file ends up going to all these different places and, and one of the questions that we have to ask ourselves is what happens if the file exploits, right? The file pops the engine, right? Which is that conversation we had several times, right? Yeah. So you, so you can see here, right? That if the file pops the engine here, we compromise all of these guys. Yeah. Right? If the file pops in here, you know, again, we, 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 it's interesting because actually, and this is where, you know, again, the analysis is, is kind of interesting, right? Because if you look at, you know, the side effects of, um, of this environment, in here, you actually have Lambda, right? So this is actually Lambda here, correct? Mm -hmm. or, or Azure Functions. So that's Lambda there. Right? Can you see that? Yeah. So that means that the, if, so, so a really cool concept is to think about the, the blast radius, right? Which is basically, you know, when something explodes, right? How, how big is the kind of the blast radius that it, it gets hit? So, so if you think about the, the, the blast radius of, of the systems, um, and that's when we then map the thread models, we see the blast radius here is the lambda functions. Right, and then is, is the, the hotness of the lambda function that caused the problem, which we already look at in a way in a different thread model, right? Where here, the blast radius is the container. Yes. Which is different. And also here, for example, you'll see that the blast radius is actually the ICAP server. Yes. So can, can you see how, for example, that TM2, is probably one of the most dangerous that we could do. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because the, the blast radius of that guy is massive, right? Like the potential to compromise at that level is, is enormous. Because, yeah. you know, you actually are compromising. I'm just trying to copy these guys. Um, so, where, you know, where, where, if you look at the lambda functions here, the, um, the, the Lambda functions, because you got several, although, although they will be compromised, right? They, they're all not gonna be compromised, right? Because you, 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 the attacker would actually have to hit all of them, right? So in reality, you got this, right? So you have N, 
See what I mean? So, so the reality here is that even if, you know, even if this one um, got completely sort of own, even if you got, where is it? Maybe, you know, uh, can have a shape for an explosion or, <laughs> you know, vulnerability. Is that one? Uh, risk. Uh, I need some shapes on this thing. Um, even if you got like, you know, uh, a big compromised on the lambda function. So if, so the, so if you, okay, think, think about the blast radius, right? So if you look at the blast radius of this, the, um, uh, okay, maybe uh, that guy there, right? So if I make this red, so it's bad, right? So if you look at this. Looks like we've uh, been communist. <laughs> <laughs> so if you look at that, right? Um, okay, maybe maybe this one here. What about that one? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Cool. All right. So if you look at that, the blast radius of of this gig compromise is basically all of this, right? Yeah. So so this is so when you look at the different scenarios, this is then the side effects. So when you because because with threat model, you always have to ask the question what is the worst case scenario like you know what uh, what what actually blows up like once once you actually um you know do the thing right so so if you look at this you know this is the difference and this is now will determine the different risks so can you see the different risk profiles yeah yeah so you have a situation where you know on on tm2 scenario two we risk actually uh, compromising the ICAP client, which also then asks, you know, there's a very then important question is, how does, or the server, how does the ICAP client actually survive, right, uh, a malicious ICAP server? Right? Because yeah. remember that in this scenario, you know, this guy can actually attack, um, you know, so basically in this scenario, this can actually attack that. Yeah. Right? So you could actually have an attack going from the ICAP client to the ICAP server. So the ICAP server to the ICAP client. And, and not only will this allow maybe to inject other things on a network, right? Because remember that this guy, if, and then this is the problem, right? If there is no authentication from here, there's actually other ch interesting challenges that we can ask, right? Like who can actually talk to this ICAP client, right? Yeah. Because that's the other question. See, so if there's no authentication between the F5 and the ICAP server, how does the ICAP client knows that the responses they're getting are actually correct? Yeah. Right. But also in this particular case, if this guy pops, then that could be a valid attack scenario. Yes, it would be. And and I and I would argue, right, that you know what, what you want to have here is the sort of the trust relationship that exists within these two. We we should and that's why you know initially we're talking about reducing the mass amount of code that exists, because this is a this this two here is a massive trust boundary. That right between basically the the ICAP server and um, and the, so what you're saying is that the, if your blast radius effectively encompasses um, anything that directs is directly communicating with anything that's um, hit by the radius by the blast itself. Yep, you can't trust it. Yeah, okay. Because you don't know the state that is in, right? No, no. And, and then this is where, you know, it gets, you know, you have that, that tricky thing, right? Because, you know, the reality is that, um, you know, you, you know, if, if, for example, if this server, even if the server becomes unresponsive, right? You know, the server crashes, right? Or it gets in an unresponsive state, Right, yeah. and that happens to multiple of them. You have your load balancer. How does the ICAP client work? You know, what what is the moment where you start to affect the, this end goal? Right, this traffic. Yeah. And one question we need to ask is: Does the ICAP client fails open or close? Yeah. 
right? Like if these guys are responsive, what happens there? Does it let the data go through? Does it let the data go through? Um, yeah. But, but you, so the, the, my, my, and this is, a, this is an interesting example of, you know, from a, from a threat modeling point of view, right? And, and Petra, this is kind of the game, right? Is that we mm -hmm. want to list these three options, uh, which basically should mean that, you know, this guy, you know, uh, you know, if, if you look at sort of from a, from a, a risk pile point of view, right? You know, like a list, uh, a number of risks, even just sort of, um, you know, from a, from a visual point of view, right? I, I would expect that, um, for example, this, right, has, you know, a number of risks. You know, that guy has a lot more, right? So this is basically the risks for, for, uh, for each of these modes, right? So, so that has more risks and, and this one has probably the same amount as that one, right? Maybe with a couple of variations, a bit more, and then this one will have more risks. And then what we do now is we go to the business and say, okay, you pick the one you want. And, and it's sense. okay to, you know, to, for example, when you proof of concept, it's okay to use TM version two, right? Yeah. As long as it's a conscious decision, right? As, as long as everybody in there understands that, you know, what we're doing, right, at this moment in time is, um, you know, has this number of risks that we, we are accepting and, you know, and, and, then, and then you might address it before it goes live or not, right? Yeah. But the, the point is to make conscious decisions. Yeah. So on the, um, so I'm intrigued by the, so the, this, this concept of this blast area. So on the, the uh, TM number one, the, so you've got the docker there. So you've got the, so if the, if the um, engine was to blow up in, in Docker and mm -hmm. GW build is talking with that Docker to, are we, so are we suggesting that we would, we need um, authentication between GW build and the Docker that it's just fired up to process in order to um, confirm that anything that gets back from that um, entity is what is expecting to get back? Yeah. So this, this is, yes. Right, and this is where what you want to do now here, right, is literally um, create uh, a separate thread model, right? I, I move it to the right. Can you see on the right there? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what you now want to do is literally do uh, a GW Docker, right, thread model. So is it basically then best if like you have several trust boundaries, like you say, mm -hmm. just to do a separate threat model, basically for every trust boundary. Yeah. Well, yeah. yes. So every trust boundary is going to have its own threat model, right? Because yeah. it has its own properties. And then you have the multiple scenarios of what you, you, you're doing that. Yeah. So those so, comparison threat models are, are all pitched at pretty much this. If, if you're looking at um, each scenario from the same height, um, so that's, that's, that's what you see from, from that height, but what you're doing on the right is taking a, an individual threat model and then going at a lower height, basically, and going into, into more detail for that, for that scenario. Correct. Cause, cause, cause this is, so, so the way it works here, right. And this is important, right? Because if you look at this, right. So I'm, I'm, I'm not going to design the way if you, if you're using the forensic workbench, right. Yep. Uh, this is what you would, you, this is what you would see, right? So if you're using the friends of workbench, uh, you would have uh, a kind of um, uh, a module that, um, so you have Docker container, right? And then you need to think about how you want to play this, right? So, so here you got the file uh, folder, right? Um, in the, um, uh, in, in this, in the, in the, um, in the actual uh, EC2 instance, right? So let's let's say like that, right? So you got yes. 
So that you got that. And in here, what you have is you have a folder, and this folder actually has, um, you know, basically it has those three bits, right? Has the the input, right? Mm -hmm. It has the out the config, and it has the output, right? So these are these are the, the three the three folders that exist in um, you know uh, that that are given to the Docker container, uh -huh. right? So you got input and output, right? And and this already raises interesting questions. Like, you know what what is the read write probab you know status of those, right? Because you can you know and, and also what you know what, how does it matter? So the workflow that happens here is you got a GW and you can call this let's say the REST API. Right, so this is the REST API functionality, right? That gets called, and then mm -hmm. what this does is the REST API um, basically um, populates the the data. So the REST API, from a workflow point of view, will um, put the data. Oops, put the, populate that. So it will add, you know the you know this this information right so we'll mm -hmm. take the file in so you, so the way it works is you get a file in in here and then um uh, uh, can i rotate it now okay so i'll just put it there so it starts with a file arriving there right so there's a file arriving to the rest api the rest yeah. api would put the file on the input put the config right and then the rest api um what it does it calls a Docker container, right? So this is where, so you start another container. So these are two different containers and that's where the DW engine is, right? Okay, yes. And then, and then the, the happy path is that the Docker container will basically put up, populate the stuff on the output there, yes. right? So that's, that's the flow that happens, right? Now, if we look at our blast radius, what we're now looking here is to say, okay, so um, if, uh, if, if I'm compromised over here, right? So if, if I have a malicious file that comes through here, right, which I don't trust, the malicious yeah. file is inside my input, which is okay, right? Is there, right? So I got a malicious file that I don't trust. Malicious file hits the engine, right? Blows up the engine. I has remote code execution in the mm -hmm. engine, which basically means that this guy is also compromised. Yep. But, and that's it, right? So, so if you look at this, right? The worst case scenario here is that a file on the output, is there's a file in the output that we don't, you know, we shouldn't be there. Maybe the file has a payload. Right? Maybe the file has stuff modified. Maybe the file has a different type of virus, right? Yeah. Because because we have to give this access to that, right? Because remember the job of this function is to create a file. Yeah. Right? Now the interesting question is whether this could also go here, right? Or even, you know, there, right? Which is what we don't want. Yeah. So so we, we, we want to make sure that there's no path that the propagation of the exploits, right, can, can hit other systems. Yeah. But the difference is, right, if, if I do the same thing, right, um, for, you know, for the, the process, right, so this is the GW process, right, mm -hmm. something like this, right, or the GW, so if the REST API is here, See, then, then is is very different. Um, the the blast radius. So in this scenario, the blast radius is actually that, right? So what's the, so what's different on that scenario? So so if this is the GW REST API, right, and you're yeah. not using Docker. You're just oh, okay. using processes, right? Or in process even, right? Okay. Right? So yeah, this is yeah. what happens in process, right? Yes. You start the GW engine, and you can still use the files if you wanted to. In fact, 
in, in some cases, you probably don't, right? In some cases, what you do is actually this, right? So in this case, you probably do this, yeah. right? You got everything loaded in process, yeah. right? So, so in this scenario, what is actually happening is that when the blast radius hits, right? It will hit the whole process. Yeah. And the reason this is now super dangerous is because this would now be able to attack, right? Whatever is next to it. Yeah. So the, the, the client code is, is now at risk as well. Yes. Well, yeah. and also the network. Yeah. Right? <laughs> because remember where this is, right? So yeah. this could now attack the, the, the local network because you know, you have remote code execution on this process. Yeah. And this is where a lot of vulnerabilities occur because local networks or this environment is highly trusted, right? So you don't expect to be attacked by that engine. And that's no. how a lot of elevation of privilege occur because now you have a component. So if you go back to um, the ICAP server, right? So if you go back to, you know, here, can you see where I am now? Yeah. Yeah, you don't expect, so this guy at the top doesn't expect to be attacked by downstream. No. And then this gets compounded, for example, when this dude here, right, is actually running, and, and you probably can see what, where I'm going, guess where sometimes, so a lot of times what happens is all of this is running, right? in um, a Q8 cluster, right? And that means that you can now attack the cluster, right, from the inside. Right, yeah. Right, sorry, not Q4, Q8. So, so if you now have other, and, and you know, you have other pods running here, right? Which yeah. are basically, you know, doing other parts of the thing. Like imagine on the email system, right? One pod could be, you know, the, the, the filtering, another part could be the website, another part could be the SMTP receiver, all the stuff. Now, all yeah. these guys can be attacked from that process, if that was an image. But we have the same problem here, which is why we need to also lock this container down, right? So this, this dude here could also do something similar, right? So we have to be careful. So if you look at, you know, this guy here, we also have to be careful with, you know, this one attacking the the local network right so we have to be careful that we we isolate this docker container from attacking the local network if you have, if they but that's another local, the, local container the local the local cluster the docker the docker hosts I, okay yeah so i'm gonna say because that's so that's that, that that was a docker container itself wasn't it this this one here yeah yeah so that's um, but you need to explicitly do this. So, for example, you know, by design, you know, if you're not careful, this this Docker host can talk to that one if he knows the IP address. Yeah. So, but the good news is that we can lock this down quite spectacular. Like, so you can lock down a container quite effectively. Yeah. Yeah. So if you uh, if you're passing in the the uh, input output and configure it as uh, volumes to the uh, to the Docker container. Then yep. there'll, be, there'll be no network access at all, will there? So Correct. It, 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 yes. It'll be really. It'll compete completely muted as to what yeah. um, what it, it's capable of doing. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And you compare that to this one here or the other ones where it is much harder to protect. Yeah. 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 That that seems to be the most reasonable. Yeah. way to isolate if anything happens makes sense but but this is how you need to present it right so we yeah, need yeah, to yeah. present the multiple variants and then you know it's also very important to to never you know decide by the other side right you know like okay put it so there's a time where you can put the foot down right if they really make the wrong decision <laughs> then, <laughs> then you go all right maybe maybe that wasn't the choice but it's very important to walk every player with it right it's very important to say look you can choose this one but actually look the, the amount of vulnerabilities you've got is this right so there you go like if you choose 
all those risks, <laughs> you can yeah. have TM2, right? If you choose this one, you got that. If you choose that version, you got a couple more, right? So for example, yeah. the reason I would put a couple more here, yeah, so this is one of those where I would basically, the risk pile should literally be like that, right? Like for TM2, it should be like a, a shopping list of problems, right? For yeah. TM3, I will add the Lambda that introduces a, a problem that every other file that gets processed by the same hot Lambda could be compromised. On this one, on four, I will add the fact that you're now jumping into another network, right? So you're jumping into our network, right? Which is yeah. a variation of it, right? And on this one, you, you are on the same box, right? So, so I, I know, the, the, the most, I would say the most secure solution, the one that has the least amount of risk at the moment is basically is, is a, a, a server side, they host all of it that has both the, um, and I would even split this into two servers, right? One just with the Docker and one with the ICAT server, again, just for even load balancing, right? And, and, and scalability, yeah. um, because this guy can scale quite nicely. The heavy processing is then here, right? So you probably want to have a Q8 cluster here for the Docker bit, and, and that's the one that has the least amount of risks. Yeah. But, but when, you, when you compare that with that, right? Then that becomes, mm, that's a bit dangerous. Yeah, just a tad. Yeah. Right? But, it, but, it's, but most first versions tend to start like this. Sorry, Petra, you want to say? Yeah, is there like, do you think is there also like a big financial difference between these two, so, these solutions? Or do they seem to be quite similar in a way that they could possibly just probably be the same, isn't it? Um, no. Where do you uh, factor that? Well, this is more expensive. Right. right. Okay. Because you have another server, you got another thing, right? Mm -hmm. I, would, I would actually argue that, so, so the reason why you then want to do the, oh, we missed, we, we missed our best friend here. Where is it? Let me bring it back. Um, the reason why we need to, to basically now think from a point of view of, of the, you know, the, the strides and, and the multiple bits, right? Is because you, you, you kind of need to ask yourself those questions, right? So you need to look at those two solutions and then when you look at, you know, the stride bit, and I'm just copying and pasting into the, the, the draw IO. So if you then look at um, the stride, where did he add it? There you go. So if you now look at the, um, these two solutions, right? You know, one and two, right? You, you also see, start to understand a bit the complexity of it, right? So, you know, the, re the reality is that, you know, if you add another server, you, you have to care about how you authenticate from A to B. You have the same extra set of questions, right? Because you need, you have another thing that you need to protect. So, mm -hmm. so the reality is option two is probably the cheapest and the fastest to implement. Mm -hmm. Right? But, but you can see the, 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 the pollution, like the, the, the thing that you're inheriting, which is actually quite massive. Yeah. And that's why, you know, like in, for me, this is the power of a, of a threat model, right? Because then as we extract the risks and the vulnerabilities, right, you, you, you really are nudging a, a direction. So I, I don't agree when some people say, oh, you, you don't use threat modeling to make decisions or you don't use threat model for strategy or, you know, even the, the mapping stuff. Of course we use, right? That's the point, right? The point of this is to make it very clear, right? What are the good choices and what are the bad choices? And when you make a choice that maybe is bad or let's say not good from a security point of view, we have to make sure that everybody understands. And then, you know, and when you move from, hey, it works to a proof of concept to let's, let's put 100,000 customers through this thing, right? You need to understand, you know, the different levels of, of, uh, of risk that you have. Mm -hmm. But the other problem is that also the option A, TS or TM2, is also the, the, more, the more risky one from a, from, a, from, a, from a denial of service, right? And, and a kind of um, ability to provide a service, this is very risky because it means that if something yeah. goes wrong with the engine, you lose, you lose everything, right? Where here, the maximum you use, you lose is one file. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Makes sense. Well, I think that, that wraps it up quite nicely. Okay, I'm going to have to drop off. Thank you for this. This was really cool. Um, yeah, me too. And I'll see you next cool. time. Yeah, and Paul, I think this was a, a good session.
how, you know, how, you know we, we now need to take this to the next level internally, right? And, and start to visualize this and, and, and present the multiple options, right? All right, cool. So I'm going to uh, end the, the session. Uh, recording, where is the things?